India, China, Indonesia, Mexico, and Turkey. They None of them have any debt. They're all growing 7 to 12 percent. We're growing very slowly. We have a lot of debt. So the only way we can beat them is on the battlefield. It's not in the office um, because they will defeat us economically and our behavior is not making us um, into their friends because we're unilateral and violent. Nobody else in the world fights wars except the West anymore. So the U.S. Is, uh, is, owns warfare now. There's no need for warfare. No other country practices it without our leadership. So this invasion and disaster capitalism, I have a little picture here. I think I can produce uh, photos, um, and I'll give you the uh, lowdown on it, hopefully. Let's see. So, this is kind of hard to see, but uh, what we've got here is this is Crusoe Economics. You've got f four guys, and they're on this island, and um, these four guys can produce four widgets a day, four things for you a day. There's a little man with a shovel. There's a man lying down. He's just relaxing. And there's a man who is painting a picture at the seashore. So basically, people have an optimal deployment. That means there's something they really think is important, like writing a novel or doing research. And people have productive deployment where they're involved in creating things of value. And then people have time to reflect and relax and not do any sort of deployment. Um, to be unstressed and healthy, uh, you cannot be constantly high-strung all the time as an entire society in, in theory, people. Uh, so um, in Keynesian economics, so what we've got here now, he's got a gentleman seeing whether he's going to buy one pair of shoes or two. And we've got a, a general thing about whether he's going to get one tank or two. So let's say we only need one tank. Um, and let's say that one of these guys can build one of these tanks in one day. So if, if we only order one tank, we use less resources, which is good, um, and only have to work one day in basic production. We can spend uh, the day we save uh, doing something of a higher order activity, or we can simply enjoy ourselves. So what's the benefit of generating a second tank? There's really no benefit at all. Now, of course, the general would like to have two tanks. Uh, so why does he want two tanks, though? And the issues are want. So for this system to work, there has to be a need, constant need, and, and literally lack. Because if you have lack, then you will uh, need the second tank to... Uh, 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 to uh, because people have an economic insecurity, they're not satisfied. They don't feel satisfied with their earnings, therefore they need to consume and sell as much as possible. And you have status. By accumulation, you achieve status. So if you can get other people to consume more, you achieve more status in society. So these are the three things you need for this sort of uh, cons accumulation-based, consumption-based, growth for growth sake-based uh, market. In this picture, if this man would just have one pair of shoes and this general would have only one tank, but that instead of two tanks and two pairs of shoes, good things happen. Less resources are used and people can do things other than pure production work, uh, just like we thought in the 50s. Okay, so how does this all work? Well, uh, as I've shown you folks before, um, it turns out all these media companies, oh, uh, let's see here, all of these media companies, basically these six companies uh, are symbolized that, that all the Fortune 500 companies are interlocked. They invest the same amount in banking. They, can, they, they have a a huge control of banking, these six companies, a huge control of defense and security, um, energy, construction, conglomerates, media companies, all, communications companies, all of these are equally invested. And what happens in invasion and disaster capitalism is that the taxpayer 
has to fund, uh, fund deficits. But the companies involved in the invasion and then the rebuilding, none of they make money no matter what happens. So they're basically taking your money and transferring that. And that is done. Okay, so uh, how is it possible for this to all occur? Where we're losing our rights, invading more countries, and uh, following a policy of military uh, uh, consumerism rather than economic development. And in my view, it's just like the Roman Empire. During the days of the Republic, um, virtue was valued at least as much as power and status uh, because of the concept of the Roman. The Roman was a morally superior person in self-discipline, in being able to handle uh, 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 bitter conditions, and, um, and being part of his uh, collective, his group, in serving his group's true interests, and his group being Rome. But as, um, as things progressed, of course, the Roman Republic was suspended and the empire rose, and we saw all sorts of excess. So the morality of the nation had been lost. And as a result, the things that became important were power, fame, and wealth. And what I've seen in people is that first people get into the upper class. They feel some privileged. They have servants without even having a second thought about it, thinking that they're employing people. Um, so there's a certain amount of vanity sets in when people get into the upper class. Uh, then comes a point where they're actually elevated to the ruling class. And in certain cases, this can lead to certain narcissism, a certain sense of entitlement. Also, when people get into large power structures like the Fortune 500, they can tend to feel like they're part of a team. They feel enormous power when they have a corporate card that literally could scale to tens of millions of dollars. So they associate the power of the company they work for as personal power. And um, ultimately, as a person becomes one of the top 100 or 500 or 1,000 people in um, power being government, fame, we, uh, celebrity, and wealth, billionaireism, the psychopathy and a sociopathy seems to set in where the people start to lose grasp of what their actions are doing in terms of human misery and death, like uh, Hillary Clinton and Susan Rice's invasion of Libya. Uh, has cost, uh, if it had happened in America, it would have killed millions of Americans. There would be hundreds of thousands being tortured. Um, uh, and apparently they feel no uh, qualms with this whatsoever because they're now planning to do the same thing to other places. Um, Syria is surrounded by foreign intelligence services, armies, drones, uh, and um, they are being destabilized. Um, uh, and this is uh, so these people learn nothing from Libya. So <clears throat> I think I've made it pretty clear that this complex um, of groups uh, right here all benefit from invasion capitalism. You invade, that sells guns. It helps the media companies' margins. Um, once you've invaded, you can use consulting, construction, uh, uh, conglomerates, banking and finance can start, like in the case of Libya, they can start to sell, get more involved in Libyan oil. They can make a higher premium in unstable places that's highly marked up. In Iraq, they were getting 30% of the production in some contracts because it was quote-unquote unstable, whereas their actual security costs might have written, risen to consume 3% of that at most. So they were, standard commission is 10%. They're making 30 on, uh, and rocks have $40 trillion worth of oil. Thank you, good night, and good luck.